What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from MacMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic, and it's October. It's spooky season. And this is House of Spoils. It's currently available on Amazon, and it's vaguely in the realm of spooky season. <laughs> so I'll have the lights on for it because that's sort of your indication of level of scary slash horror. Uh, that you may may come to expect from this film. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Uh, it stars Ariana DeBose, and uh, she plays a chef who is hoping to open her own restaurant. And the IMDb uh, <laughs> description for this is nuts. Uh, <laughs> Something about how she struggles to open, but the previous owner won't fights to sabotage her or something like that. And I was like, uh, I guess. Um, so, yes, she's a chef who's getting her first shot. And she, so she has somebody who's, you know, she has financial backers and they're trying to open this restaurant. And she's trying to come up with like this. You know, explosive new menu and new vision and all that kind of stuff with this new staff and her new sous chef. Um, and most of the rest of the cast you would never even have heard of. Uh, they've they've got Academy Award winner Ayanna DeBose, and that's really all they needed for this. They were like, well, people will come for that. That's that's enough. Um, there's. I obviously I don't know it's like they don't want you to know what the movie's about like is that what it is so yes there's some sort of like previous owner thing that's happening here and some hint of a ghost-ish story that's in and around this um is it like a malevolent spirit I, I don't know not really um at first, she has kind of a negative interaction, I guess you could say, but uh, everything works out. There are a couple of scenes that would qualify as horror. Most of the film would just kind of qualify as a psychological thriller. You could also chalk this up to being really about the demand that somebody would put on themselves to succeed uh, in this world. Uh, it's a little like the menu if instead of being at the end of his career where uh, Ray Fiennes was, where he, that's really the best he can do. You know what I'm saying? Like he's already reached the pinnacle of his career. There's no other place he could possibly surprise people anymore with, with food and with his menu. Uh, other than that, um, she's sort of at a point where she needs to prove herself at the beginning, so there's more stress, there's more, okay, put on your, your big boy pants and, and go out there and, and, uh, and make it happen, uh, you know, lots of self-confidence, uh, not necessarily unwarranted, she doesn't necessarily make us feel like she doesn't know what she's doing, but it does feel more like a psychological thriller with things that are happening around her, some of it somewhat paranormal. Um, it's it's almost it, like it, it's sort of a horror film. <laughs> like it it has elements that float in and out. But if if I was to recommend like just straight up a movie in October to be like, oh yeah, this is a great horror film. This is a great spooky season movie. This is sort of like really on the fringe, and it doesn't necessarily mean I didn't like it either. It's just like, it, its elements are so fringy, you know? So there's this garden that she goes into, um, which immediately gave me vibes of, oh, well, they're trying to do like an Adam and Eve parallel. There's this thing where she goes into the garden one time, something happens and she's kind of just left with, she's a fruit. Like the, the one thing that she got out of it was this one fruit. And I was like, oh, they're going to make parallels to, like, the Garden of Eden. And she went in and she got, like, the forbidden fruit. And what's the forbidden fruit going to do to her? 
and I thought the show, I thought the movie was going to go in like a really interesting direction with like uh, parallels between that. It doesn't really do that. It just it kind of just goes in a different direction than so. Don't read too much into it. <laughs> I read. I was like, ooh, they're really focusing on this fruit. That was kind of a forbidden garden. I was like, is this going to be like a Garden of Adam and Eve type of thing? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Okay, then. Uh, there's sort of like an old lady that, that pops up, I guess, who qualifies as some like a somewhat scary character. Because, you know, old women are scary. Um there's there's a guy in here too that kind of like flashes around and jumps around. There's some s supernatural stuff. There's one moment that I liked where she's kind of Ariana DeBose kind of has like a lot is already being thrown at her. She's already in a situation that sucks, and then like the supernatural stuff starts happening and she starts seeing it. And she's like, no more. <laughs> she's like no more supernatural bullshit. And, and then like it keeps happening. She's like, is it, okay? Is that all you got? Is that all you can, like, she starts, like, egg, like egging it on, like, uh, I love it. I love that part of it. That th that part was, was funny to me, because you, you rarely ever see people have this sort of, like, um, dynamic with the spook, like, people are usually, like, freaked out by it, but she was just, like, she was beyond, you know, she was just, like, I'm tired of this shit, and I liked that attitude of it. I think people are, something's getting dragged a little bit more than it needs to be. Like, it's it's IMDb and Metacritic scores are a little lower than, I don't know. I mean, I can kind of I can kind of get it. But, like, there are parts of this where I, Ariana's having so much fun that I kind of enjoyed it. Um, and one of the parts was when she just is no longer, she's just not having it anymore with, with these little supernatural things. And to be fair, the film isn't like a hundred percent supernatural. Like it comes and goes, you know? Um, it's, it feels like it could be very psychological. It feels like the ending to this could have been all in her head. You know, like I was waiting for a reveal of this to all just be like a metaphor for the pressure we put on, uh, people to succeed and, uh, and the, the pressure that women have to succeed in a world that is dominated by male chefs, which they talk about, uh, in this film as, uh, as both Ariana had a hard time moving up the, you know, to get to her head chef position, but also her sous chef is basically lying and manipulating because she rarely is ever given an opportunity to move into a sous chef type role. And so uh, Ariana finds that out and they have like a, a conversation and basically it's a conversation about how the world is male dominated and she's worked in too many kitchens that are run by men and she'll never, she never gets an opportunity to move up. So the film touches on some interesting ideas. I don't know that it really follows through on, on any of them. Um, so it's been an interesting conversation to have uh, script wise with the filmmakers is, is it's like the film is so close to saying something, uh, and to really landing a punch, but it, it gets kind of messy. It, it's got like a couple of ideas that it's mixing together and it's not a hundred percent landing them. Um, I guess sort of like, a you know, a maybe a, a meal at a restaurant where you go and you sit down and you're like, well, separately, these things probably work, but I don't know that they work together in the same meal. You know, <laughs> one of those things where you're like, I don't know. I mean, I guess if I had eaten each one of these by themselves, they would be fine. But when you put them on the plate together, something about it just doesn't quite work as well. So... I'm a little mixed on House of Spoils. I didn't think it was terrible. Uh, I don't think it's great. Uh, I love seeing female directors behind uh, the, you know, at the director's chair directing a film about... That's what another disappointment I have is just like, you're so close. I feel like you're so close to saying something really profound here about that. And instead it gets kind of lost in the desire to have this supernatural presence 
which could have just been a psychological supernatural presence, which could have been like a metaphor, you know? Um, it's, eh, damn, you know? It's just like, I want to like this, and uh, I want to, you know, support Ariana DeBose in her film career. She's had a really sort of odd film career this year, with ISS being like, eh, that was all right. You know, like, we gave her an Oscar. It's like, can we get her in some good roles? Is she, can we challenge her? Um, so, yeah, I audio description wise on this, uh, I really liked. I thought the audio description tra track to this was really pretty good. Um, it's it describes things. There wasn't ever a time where I was like, oh, I feel like we could have done that better, or oh, uh, I don't get what's going on here. Um, there's probably some, the best sort of like horror-esque reveals were done really well. Like the scenes where I'm like, ooh, that's close, that's as close to horror as we're going to get here. Um, worked really pretty well. Um, and there are scenes where, uh, just being able to uh, grab the intensity of Ariana's character in any moment is uh, somehow managed rather well by the audio description track. Um, I don't know. I did. I liked certain parts of it. There were some parts where it's like you don't know. You're like, oh, is, are we gonna get a jump scare? Is there gonna be something here? And I love like the ominous, the way that they kept. Uh, you know, if somebody, if there's somebody floating around in the background or a shadow or somebody standing over there, you know what I'm saying? Like things that you point out when you're like, I don't know, is this going to turn into something? Uh, it has some of those elements to it. Most of them don't really result in anything. Uh, a couple, a couple do. So, um, so I'm saying like this film is really on the fringe of being like a full on scary movie slash horror. It feels like it's it feels like it's trying to do two different things and, and it's, it's fighting within itself. Like we've, film, it, which is really interesting because the film has two directors. It feels like one director just wanted to make a film about, you know, it's hard out here for a female chef. And then the other director was like, well, but what if it was a horror movie? And <laughs> like those elements are, fighting each other because the film never completely feels like it's a hundred percent working. It, it always feels like it's like, like ideas that were thought of, but I don't know that they were executed. So, um, house of spoils, I'm going to give house of spoils a C plus. Uh, I'll go slightly positive here on house of spoils. I, I'm not, I'm not in love with it, but, uh, for a straight to video, Amazon, uh, you know, they're get, they're kicking this out at the beginning of October to kind of start their horror movie titles. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess, you know, this one could be the furthest one away from, <laughs> for Halloween. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. As always, uh, yeah, I'd left the lights on for this one. I, I didn't feel like doing spooky voices or anything for this because I was like, I don't know, is this, a, I don't know, this is, I was never really scared or intimidated. Um, oftentimes I talk about horror movies and I'm like, well, if I wasn't blind, I wouldn't watch this because I don't like certain, certain films that are gore. And I was like, I probably would have been like trepidatious to watch this because I would have been like, ooh, is this, a, is this, am I going to get like jump scares like 24 seven? Is this like, What's it, what's, it, but having seen this, I'd been like, yeah, I'd watch this. <laughs> I, would, I would watch this. Um, yeah, there's, there's just not much to this. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I will see you guys on the other side.